Welcome guys to another episode of Starting with Starling. In today's episode, we'll create food items that fly from the right side randomly. We'll also do a collision check with the hero. Now before I begin, I want to state that the process of creating items, updating their properties, generating them, animating them and doing the collision check with the hero is almost similar to what we did with the obstacles in the 7th and 8th episodes. Since it is so, I have made this episode a fast track episode. This means I won't be hand coding any logic in the video, but I already have it coded. Also note that this does not mean that the future episodes will be fast paced. Don't worry, this doesn't mean I'll skip any step in this episode. For people who still want to understand every single step, I'll show the already written code and explain it. You may pause, play and follow the video according to your pace of learning. So let's do it. The first step is to create a class. This class is called item and it is placed in the package objects extended from Starling sprite. The next thing to do is to define the variables of this class. The items need a variable to track the type of food item. So we define underscore food item type of type integer. The second property we'll need is the image that shows the item. We'll call it item image. This will be of type image. We'll accept a parameter in the constructor to define the food item type. So underscore food item type. Now before we assign this to the property of the class, We'll create setter and getter functions for the class property underscore food item type and naturally assign the constructor parameter to the property of the class through the setter function. Inside the setter, let's create an image for the graphic to be displayed. So we are initializing the item image property and passing the texture from assets dot get atlas, which is the texture atlas dot get texture and pass a string item followed by food item type integer. This picks up one of the item textures from the sprite sheet. We'll also reset and center the position of the item image to the item object by decrementing the X and Y of the image by half of its width and height. Do not forget to add the image to the display list. We are done with the item class. Let's head back to the in game class and inside the on game take function right after we call the animate obstacles function let's call a new function create food items and define it inside this function i'll generate a random number from 0 to 1 and check if it's greater than 0 0.95 only the 5% of the times when it is greater than 0 0.95 i'll create a new item since our frame rate is around 60 we'll approximately end up creating one or two food items per second Inside this condition, I'll create a new item object item to track and pass a random value to it. Note that I've also rounded off the numbers to their next whole number, so we won't get a zero. We have five types of items in our sprite sheet, so we want a random texture to be picked from item one to item five. Item now gets created. We need to add it to the display list, but before we do that, let's place it outside the stage on the right side in a random y position. So I'll write item to track dot x is equal to stage dot stage width plus 50, a position outside the stage area and item to track dot y will be an integer value of a math dot random multiplied by the game area we defined to constrain the hero, obstacles and the items. Finally, add the item to the display list with a simple add child method. The items are added but need to be animated to the left. To do that, we shall first declare the vector variable items to animate. Do not forget to initialize this vector in the initialize method. Next, in the create food items function, as soon as we create one, let's push it to this vector. Now let's call a function animate items inside the on game tick function and define the same. Let's run through a loop for the items to animate vector and animate each item. First, to declare a variable of type item to track the animation. Next, writing a loop and inside it, first define the item to track variable. After that, we decrement the item to tracks x property by the player speed 
and multiply it by elapsed time. Also, we'll remove the item from the items to animate vector if it goes out of the stage on the left since we don't need to animate it anymore. Lastly, we'll remove the object from the display list. Time to test. You should see the items randomly getting generated and animating towards the left. In the actual game, I wrote simple logic to track variables and patterns and generated four different patterns of food items. Horizontal line, vertical line, zigzag and random positioning. Feel free to experiment a little more and generate different patterns for your version of the game. Now that we are done with the animation, it's time to detect collision. Just like we did with the obstacle, we'll do a simple bounce collision check with the items. We'll start by adding another condition in the animate items function to check the bounce intersection. So now the item will have to be removed from items to animate vector and also the display list if the collision check returns true. Time to test again. You should see the behavior as expected. As you can observe, the code that I have written is barely a good collision detection. So you might want to define rectangle objects inside the hero, obstacles and the items to define better bounds that are smaller than the actual bounds. This would definitely help in getting better results. I have kept it to a minimum as my job here is just to introduce you to the process. Alright, so that's it guys for this episode and in the next episode let's explore a simple score counting and learn a little bit about displaying text in Starling Framework using bitmap fonts and embedded fonts. We'll also learn what goes inside and what's best suited for different scenarios. Don't forget to send me your feedback, subscribe and keep coding. See you next time. <laughs>